Let's do another tier rankings, why don't we? I made one of these a couple weeks ago, figured let's make another one, see, you know, talk about uh, where I'm at with all of these teams right now. So we have six tiers, we have the team that are teams that are in the bad tier, the plucky tier, the dark horse playoff team, the playoff team, the dark horse contender, and then the true contender. So without further ado, let's not stall, let's just get into the list, starting off with the bad teams. So here are the bad teams, starting off with the Pittsburgh Steelers who, again, don't think I'll get too many arguments here. Uh, you did get a win, so there you go. I still maintain Mike Tomlin looks very good as a head coach. He's still very good. You're seeing some baby steps from Pickett, and hey, with TJ Watt back, maybe you're better than bad. I want to see it for more than one week. You could talk me into Steelers maybe being plucky just now that they have TJ Watt back because he doesn't mean a ton to this team, but for now, uh, they still had too many bad losses on their uh, record for me to sit here and really get them, uh, be too high on them, is what I think. Um, you have the Texans here, who, uh, you know, again, don't think we'll get too many arguments there, same thing with the Panthers, those are teams that have have some young players, but as a whole, not a complete team. Uh, I think the three teams you could argue uh, with would be the Raiders, who they still have talent, I mean, Devontae Adams has been awesome this season, he's been great, they just, you know, they're very much too dependent on him right now, and with Derek Carr playing poorly, I mean, you know, uh, I'm, I don't think many teams are afraid of playing the Raiders right now, or the Broncos, who, the Broncos, man, their defense has been awesome this season, their offense is just so bad, and offense still wins games in today's NFL, even if it is a bit more defensive-centric than we've seen it be in previous seasons, so, um, you know, uh, their offense, unless Russell Wilson finally starts playing like Russell Wilson, this is just where I feel like I have to put them. Um, the Saints are also here in the bad tier. They lost to the Steelers, who I have in the bad tier. I guess I kind of got to put the Saints in the bad tier as well. Uh, just a disappointment for the Saints team. I mean, their defense has taken a step back this season, which was a surprise. Uh, so defense isn't really good. Their offense is sputtering. I mean, it's hard to put them in any other tier. Next up, the plucky tier. These are the teams that, okay, if you're a fan of a good team, you expect to beat these teams, but you don't think that you're going to beat these. You're not just like, okay, I'm going to have to watch. Let me see what's on red zone. Like You still watch the game because you think that there's still a chance they could lose. Uh, the Bears and Lions, who played each other, kind of similar things with both of those teams, right? Defense, not really there, but offense, definitely there. And so because of that, you know, kind of these, some couple of these inconsistent teams are in the plucky tier. The Jaguars, who, again, have been very inconsistent this season. Jacksonville is a team that has had some, you know, some very good, uh, uh, very good moments in this one. Trevor Lawrence has looked very good at times. They've also had some very tough moments. Their defense, kind of the same thing. Their collection of young players who have been inconsistent, and so therefore, you know, if you get them on the wrong day, you could be in trouble, but you're probably not going to get them on the wrong day kind of thing. Browns, kind of similar thing. Like, Brissett's so up and down. Uh, this defense has been disappointing this season, and, you know, the offense has been kind of disappointing this season, so, you know, they're plucky. You could maybe even talk me into bad. I think they have enough there that I'm still going to put them in plucky, though. Same thing with the Colts, who, again, uh, disappointing season, but hey, I undefeated Jeff Saturday. Maybe there's some hope there with the Colts. They also do have, uh, you know, Matt Ryan has played, uh, you know, he played well in that one game, so maybe you hope that the benching kind of has revitalized his career, potentially. I don't know. There's hope for something like that to happen. There still are pieces. This defense still has, at times, looked very good, but they're just, you know, you can't put them much above plucky. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll skip the Falcons for a second because I have more to talk about with them. The Rams... Uh, offense has been a mess. Their defense is good enough. I still put them in plucky. But for the Falcons, uh, you know, uh, they're kind of just another one of those teams where they just, they're just not a complete team yet. I think you have to ho let them build a little bit more where their offense has at times looked very good, but Mariota has been very inconsistent. This defense as a whole has not been good. They have some stars on the defense. It's just not a complete defense. So they're a work in progress, in my opinion. Now I have four Dark Horse playoff teams. Worth mentioning, these are not the teams that I think may, might make the playoffs. This is not a standings thing, right? So the Giants are here, even though the Giants are a team that uh, obviously is going to make the playoffs. I think some Giants fans would argue they should be at least a playoff team if they're, you know, going to make the playoffs. Uh, but this is how my tiers work. They feel like kind of a team that should be a fringe playoff team, but their record is better than that, which... At the end of the day, that's the goal, win football games. Don't have to apologize for that. But that's just kind of how I feel about them. But you also have, you know, the, 
the balls here, which that's the Washington football team. They're a team that, you know, again, they've shown some flashes. They're winning with Tyler Heineke. There's, uh, they're competent, but are they going to make the playoffs? I don't know. The Packers, the Packers got a huge win against the Dallas Cowboys. They still have some tough losses on their schedule, though. So, uh, and, you know, their schedule doesn't get too much easier down the stretch. So, don't know if they will make the playoffs, but they have a chance. And they're playing very good. They played a very good game against Dallas. You see what they're capable of. The question is, can they keep it going? And also, again, disappointing defense. Uh, the Cardinals, I also put in the Dark Horse playoff team. I do think they're a much better team with uh, with Hopkins in the lineup. So because of that, I think that they're still here in the Dark Horse playoff team tier. They still do have some stars. They just don't have the consistency, I think, to feel good about putting them in the playoff team tier. As for the playoff team tier, the Buccaneers, who uh, I believe when I made this earlier, I had them in the Dark Horse playoff team tier. They are now just straight up in the playoff team tier. They are in a playoff spot at this point. They weren't when I made that last video. And I think you feel good about them as a playoff team. They still have so much work to do to get their offense complete, but there's at least, uh, you know, I think they're all right here and they're moving in the right direction. So again, part of it is a projection on the future, in my opinion. The Jets are here. They are a very fascinating team. I, I really did consider putting them in a dark horse contender tier. Still felt like I haven't seen enough from Zach Wilson. I haven't seen enough from this offense to put them in that tier. But again, their defense has been so good. They've been so well coached. They're clearly a uh, a playoff team and kind of the same for the Patriots, right? Uh, their offense hasn't done enough for me to put them higher, but they've been really good defensively and they're really good, really well coached. So I do have them here. The Chargers are tough. Uh, I know, you know, my podcast co-host Kyle would probably put them in the bad tier. I have him here in the playoff team tier simply because I think Justin Herbert is, he's adds a ton of value and I still trust that they will get somewhat healthier down the stretch with the, you know, with the lack of options in the receiving core. I, you know, again, I believe uh, last game they had, you know, they're missing four out of their top five receivers like no team is going to look good in that situation. No quarterback's going to look good in that situation. So they need to get healthier, and some of those injuries are not, you know, it's going to take some time for them to get healthier. But uh, I still think there's that uh, talent here. I also still think there's talent with the uh, Tennessee Titans, who, you know, uh, their offense has had some struggles at times. They also played Denver last week. That's not an easy team to play against. And their defense is one of the better defenses in football. So, again, I think their offense is still good. I think that there's a lot they can do well. I just can't quite put them in the dark horse contender tier yet until I see a bit more consistency offensively. And for Seattle, I still have them as a playoff team. I could have dropped them down if I wanted to, but decided not to. I, I still think that there's enough talent here. I did think they had a tough game against Tampa Bay. Their defense had an off day, but I'm not willing to completely say, I'm not willing to just completely forget those past several weeks that they looked really good because of uh, you know, one rough game, and they still were able to offensively move the ball uh, in that fourth quarter, make it a comeback that just fell short. So that's why I had them here. As for the Dark Horse contenders, I have three teams that, you know, uh, you could talk yourself into just being true contenders. The 49ers, who, you know, at times look very good. At times, this offense looks really good. The injuries defensively, though, concern me a lot. I think that they've had a couple of, you know, the, some of the secondary injuries can be really tough, and I don't know if they'll overcome that to the point where they can be a Super Bowl contender, but they're still a dark horse because, you know, uh, can never count Kyle Shanahan out, it feels like, uh, and there's still enough they do well, and maybe some guys can get healthy as well. Uh, for Dallas, I have them here. Tough loss against Green Bay. I think their, their coverage unit still scares me a little. It still does. Uh, I was very low on the coverage unit heading into the season. I've been wrong about that so far. But, you know, you don't want to be giving up those. Uh, they really got burned by Christian Watson against Green Bay, which, you know, maybe Christian Watson just had that breakout game and now he's awesome. We don't know. But this is a team in Green Bay that everyone had been shutting down. They weren't able to do it. Maybe it's just a fluke. It, it might be. I don't know. But that was, you know, that was a tough day for Dallas. It was a tough loss. Uh, I still think they're very good, though. But again, can they win a Super Bowl? Maybe. That's why they're a dark horse team. The Cincinnati Bengals are a team that 
They're just this is what they did last year, right? You, you catch them on their best day, they will blow the brakes off of you. The issue is they just don't play their best day consistently enough, and so because of that, you can't put them in the true contender tier just just yet because they have had those off days. You know, the the Pittsburgh loss, the Cleveland loss, they got to get some division wins. It seems like those are where they're struggling, but because uh, they lost to Baltimore as well, so they've lost to every team in their division. But uh, looking very good outside of those tough losses, so I still have them as a, a dark horse contender. But for true contenders, I have six teams here, which feels like a bit of a lot, but you know, I'd have a hard time putting any of these teams down a tier, I think. Maybe you could argue about one or two, but uh, to me, the Dolphins have proven they are a true contender. I mean, they're undefeated when Tua plays the majority of the game. Now, maybe they don't beat Cincinnati if Tua stays out there, but hey, when Tua plays the, ga- the whole game, they are undefeated, so you feel good about that. So whether you want to call it 7-1 and or 7-0, and it's still a good record. Um, the Bills I have here, I guess one last thing about the Dolphins, their defense does concern me a little bit, that's fair, but uh, as a whole, I still do, uh, you know, I still think their their offense is good enough, I'm putting them here. The Bills, man, just like Cincinnati, right, it's like, you catch them on their best day, they will beat you by 100, it's just like, they just, they need to play their best day more frequently, they, they don't always live up to what they can live up to, they really blew that game against the Vikings, so I nearly considered dropping them down a tier, I just feel like their upside is so high that they're still a true contender, in my opinion. But you could argue they should not be in this tier. You can make that argument. They're 6-3. and three. I mean, and last year, everyone talked about how good they were last year. They were 11-6 and six last year. So they've never been a team that's had a great regular season record. That's, you know, interesting about them. Uh, a couple years ago, they made the AFC Championship game. I don't remember the record then. But you get my main point. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles, who they have an amazing regular season record, they're still undefeated here. They play tonight. So I feel like every week uh, I talk about one team as like, hey, look out for this team. And then they lose on Monday Night Football. That seemingly is how it goes. But uh, here, I think that, you know, uh, whether they win or eventually, I think they are going to lose a game. The Philadelphia Eagles are. But I still think they're a true contender. Their defense is playing at such a high level and their offense is playing at such a high level that they might be just the, the truest contender at this point, and they have the best record, so it's reasonable to say that. The Chiefs, they have Patrick Mahomes, they're a true contender, you know, uh, Kadarius Tony's looking good again all of a sudden with the Kansas City Chiefs, so, you know, uh, magic happens in Kansas City, they're doing all right for themselves. The Ravens here are uh, a true contender in my opinion, I think that they've had some up and down games, but I still just feel like as a whole, this is a team that if they didn't blow those fourth quarter leads, this team might be, you know, might be the favorites in the AFC because they would have had, you know, if they just held on to two out of those three games that they completely blew, they would be the number one seed in the AFC. Kind of crazy to think about. So, and they're still just, you know, they still only have one more loss than the Chiefs who are the one seed in the AFC. So that's still not out of question. Um, The Vikings, I also decided to put up in the true contender tier. They got a little lucky to beat Buffalo. There's no denying that. They got a, got a couple breaks with the, you know, first Cameron Lewis not knocking that ball away, which allowed Justin Jefferson to make the grab. You then also had the, uh, you know, I mean, granted, still great catch from Justin Jefferson, but still, there was a bit of lucky, a flukiness there. Also, obviously, the fumble uh, on the botch snap in the end zone allowed the Vikings to win. But, you know, uh, as a whole, you still won that game. And I do think that as they're continuing to get better, I'm willing to put them in this tier. So, yep, those are my tiers. Tell me why you hate it. Tell me why you think I'm stupid in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.